Yes. Praise to God the Son. Praise to the God the Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise to the eternal Word of God. Yes. Praise to the only Son of God. Amen. Who came and died on the cross for the sin of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise to the God who loved mankind so much. Yes. That he came and died on the cross for, your sin. for the sin of mankind. Oh, man. Lord Jesus Christ yes. died on the cross for the sin of every individual. Amen. Without Lord Jesus Christ, yes. we have no hope. Without Lord Jesus Christ, we have no life. It is Lord Jesus Christ through his blood on the cross Amen. offers us eternal life. Hallelujah. It is Lord Jesus Christ through his blood yes. he offers us Amen. Praise to the Trinitarian God. Hallelujah. Praise to Hallelujah. the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we want to talk about something very important to the, our Muslim friends, which is coming up next week. That's right, that's right. We want to question the event of Ramadan. Yes. Anyone knows what Ramadan is? A anyone knows what, Ram what Ramadan is? Sir, do you know what is Ramadan, Ramadan? is? Month of fast fasting? Okay. Can an individual be a Muslim without fasting during the Ramadan? Yeah? Oh. So it's not one of it's your not, five pillars? It's not five pillars. Okay. But one of the five pillars that you need to practice. Yeah. And you have to practice for 30 days. So you keep yourself from the food and from the water from sun, sunrise to sunset and you keep yourself away from the sex from sunset to sunrise wait do you do that yeah, you, you keep ramadan yeah so you stay away from sunset to sunrise uh, sunrise to sunset no food no water no sex none of that yeah okay okay so today we want to question ramadan yeah implications of ramadan and the danger of Ramadan comes to the non-Muslims during the time of Ramadan. That's right, that's right. So Islamic tradition tells us mm. Ramadan stepped into the Muslim world yeah. after two years after they moved to Medina. Yes. While Muslims were coming alongside with pagans yeah. and fasting during the Ashura, mm. two years after Hijra, Allah steps in mm. and then makes it obligate, obligatory yes. obligation to the Muslims yeah. so they fast for 30 days. 30 days, yes. yes. Even though brother said yeah. that you cannot have sex with your wife during Ramadan, yeah. we know most privileged prophet <laughs> Muhammad breaks that law. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. That comes from yeah. Islamic tradition. That's so, right. We know in the time of Muhammad yeah, yeah, and yeah. Muhammad joined with pagans yeah. and he fasted until they come to Medina yeah. two years after they were fasting yes. Allah made it obligated, obligatory yeah. for Muslims to fast that's correct yes and every Muslim needs to fast from sunrise to sunset yeah. and Quran gives us a description when they need to break their fast yeah that yeah. comes from Surah 2, verse 200, verse 187. Would you like to read it that for us? Okay, all right, so it says, It has been made permissible for you, the night preceding fasting, to go to your wives. They are clothing you, they are clothing for you, and you are clothing for them. Allah knows that you used to deceive yourselves, so he accepted your repentance and forgave you. So now, have relations with them and seek that which Allah has decreed for you and eat and drink until the white thread of dawn becomes distinct to you from the black thread of night then complete the fast until the sun sets so what is the, what is the verse is telling us? so the verse is telling us, it's giving us clear or Allah has given uh, mankind clear instructions on when to fast and when to conclude your fasting and so he's speaking about when the sun comes down and and he uses the words like a, a black thread of night so we can see 
um, the, the, a specific um, period in time when you should stop that fasting? So, when you look at the sky, you see the white thread. Yeah. That is the time you start the fasting. Yeah. Okay, you eat until that time. That's right. After that, you stop. Yeah. So, since Ramadan is one of the five pillars of Islam, yeah. and exception is every Muslim needs to fast during the Ramadan for yeah. 30 days, mm. I am finding a bit difficult to understand the knowledge and wisdom of Allah with this verse, brother. Yeah. Yeah. There are the countries in the world yeah. where Muslims live, mm. yet they sometimes they don't get the nights, mm. sometimes they don't get the daytime yeah. because of the climate they live. Yes, For course. example, Alaska, yeah. Norway, Finland, that's right. those kind of countries. Yeah, yeah. So what is the implication to that to us? Well, that's a problem for us because if that's the case, we have to question Allah's omniscience. If he's proclaimed this for, or if he's given this um, decree, decree for all mankind, did he forget about the Muslims that are living in Greenland, let's say, or Canada, or Norway, Finland. or all this Finland and all this? Yeah, this reason: Canada, Greenland, Iceland, Finland, Norway, Russia, Sweden, Alaska, where we know in these nations or in these countries they have no sunrise or no set, uh, sunset, or in some parts in Canada anyway. And so, is he not aware that some of these Muslims are not going to know exactly when to fast for something that's obligatory and something that's compulsive to their very religion? Did you forget that? But also, um, we have to question, is this Islam for all mankind or, in other words, is it universal or is it just for those in Arabia or those who have sunrise and sunset? So we have to question these things. As we look at the Quran, Surah 2, verse 187, yeah. we see actually Islam cannot be for the people who live in the north of Ecuador, yeah. people who live in Canada, Alaska, Finland, Sweden, yeah. because they do not get mm. the same climate we get and the people get in Mecca. That's right. That's that right. tells us Islam is only people who live in Saudi Arabia. Right. Because those people, when they fast, if they don't have the night break, yeah. they need to focus their fast breaking in the time of Mecca, which that's what Muslim scholars conclude. Right. It implies Muslim scholars saw the need yeah. when people in Norway become a Christian, yeah. when Muslim, when people in Alaska become a Muslim, Muslim scholars complete knowledge of Allah yeah. was not good enough for those people. <laughs> Therefore, let's come up with the new rules and regulations. Innovations, yeah. They yeah. start to make up stuff. Therefore, yeah. let's focus on the Mecca, Saudi Arabia, to break your fast. If you live in a country yeah. where climate, um, where the sunset and sunrise is not exactly the same. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. It is a bit it's a big change because obviously it seems like Islam, just like they say Islam is just um, was communicated in Arabic, it seems like everything about Islam is focused and centralized towards Arab people, Arabia, from the, from the Ramadan to the language, everything. So it's not for all mankind, it's not, it's not universal. Oh, how you doing, sir? Um, and so we understand, so it, it would seem to us that really, this religious, this religion, you can't practice it correctly unless you are in an Arab nation. Actually, also when you look at the number of Muslims who live in this country, yeah. not one or two or three, there are billion, millions of Muslims yeah. live in these countries yeah. where people do not get the night, yeah. where people do not get this um, daytime yeah. during the yeah. depend time of the year. Yeah. So, as Muslims approach the Ramadan, Ramadan we question the knowledge of Allah. Yeah. We question the Islam as to be the religion to all mankind. Of course, yeah. Because it does not apply to the people who live in different parts of the world. Yeah, which yeah, is it's a problem. Shame. Yes. Also, as we saw, Ramadan is a pagan custom. Yes. As we saw, Islam just in the in looking at little bit Ramadan yep. that not for all mankind yep. also busy 
Islamic tradition contains contradiction after contradiction yeah, we know when that. it comes to the Ramadan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For example, it is Islamic teaching Islamic teaching tells us yeah. Satan is locked out during the time locked during the time of Ramadan. That's right. All the doors of heaven is open to the people. That's right. That's right. So people should be like very good because Satan is not around. Should we, yes. Should we ask the Muslims what happens to Satan? Sir, sir, what happens to Satan during Ramadan? What happens to Satan? Can any Muslims answer the question? Muslims, what happens to Satan during Ramadan? Are you not even, have you not looked into this? Are you, are you even practicing Ramadan? Okay, they, they, don't, want, they don't want to answer. Who will tell you, who will tell you? Listen. According to Islamic tradition, tradition tells us Satan are chained. They don't even know their religion. It is the same tradition. Sahih Bukhari, yeah. for example, 3123. Yeah. The devils are chained. Yet, we look at the life of Muhammad yeah. with his relation uh, with the context of the Safiya yeah. while what's happening during the Ramadan. Yes. We see uh, Satan is hanging around yeah. up there as Muhammad is making claim time of the Ramadan. Satan is practicing its freedom of walking, right, that's freedom a, of speech. That's right. All right. And that's an explicit contradiction. Satan is locked up, but yet Satan's around and hanging around with the people. Muhammad is thinking Satan reaches everywhere in the human body. Yeah. As blood reaches in it, everywhere in one's body. I was afraid. Let Satan might insert an evil thought in your mind. Wow. That is a statement. Wow. Muhammad is stating in the time of Ramadan. So there's a lot of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Other churches are telling us yeah. Satan has been chained. It looks like Islamic tradition is a bit messed up. They're a bit, they're a bit confused. So they don't know if they have Satan or if they don't. So that's a problem. One of the disturbing things when it comes to Ramadan yeah. and first thing we will we notice from the Islamic tradition is yep. you need to you need to recos, recognize that an individual is fasting. So yep. when you look at them, you need to see they look hungry. You need to see they look tired. Yeah. What does it say to you, brother? How does it make you feel? Oh, that shows to me that everything about it is bogus. It's hypocritical, it's all about the external and trying to impress people by this religion and by their fasting and trying to show people how pious they are and how wonderful they are. When in actual fact, it's really self-centered, it's really self-focused. It's all about how good they look, which is completely contrary to the Christian doctrine, which states explicitly in Matthew chapter six, where if you are fasting, that when you, you are fasting. Sorry? When you are fasting. When you are fasting, that you should ensure that um, that nobody knows exactly. You should wash your face, make sure you look um, fine, so that nobody can see that you're fasting because it's a matter of the heart. It's a matter about God looking at your heart and not about your external and everybody being impressed with you. So as we look at this Islamic tradition, yeah. As we remember, lots of Muslims, 1.8 billion of them, yeah. are going to fast from next week. Yes. We see Islamic tradition messed up. Yeah. We see life of Muhammad proves us again, once again, mm. Muhammad makes it to the history mm. as the most privileged prophet who breaks the law during the time of Ramadan. That's right. <laughs> we look at the Islamic tradition and then yeah. we see Ramadan comes from the pagan traditions, pagan customs. Yes. <laughs> Muslim came alongside with pagans. Yep. They practiced fasting. Yep. Then suddenly they moved to the month of Ramadan. Yep, yep, yep. We look at the Islamic tradition and then we see Ramadan shows us. Actually, Islam is a false religion. That's correct. That's we correct. look at the Islamic tradition and then we see Ramadan shows us. Muhammad is a false prophet. Yes. We look at the Islamic tradition. We examinate the Ramadan and then we see Quran is a false book. Yes. 
while Quran claims it is for whole mankind, yeah. when we look at the implications and the descriptions for the Ramadan, mm. how to break, break the fast, we see actually it is not for whole mankind. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. And we see... You can, Sir? You cannot drink water during the Ramadan. Are you Muslim? You can. Are you Muslim? <laughs> I don't know. What does a Muslim look like? <laughs> huh? Are you Muslim, sir? Okay, are you keeping Ramadan next week, Tuesday? From next week, Tuesday? Okay, so are you aware? Um, no, no, we're asking you. We're asking you what you what you believe. So it says that you shouldn't, uh, for example, you shouldn't can't have sex, can't have sex during Ramadan. Will you, will you, do, you, do you agree with that? Okay, so what would you say if someone if someone breaks that law, if someone starts to have sex during Ramadan, what would you say was an appropriate penalty for them? So I can't hear you. Speak up. Where every sheep get hung for his own feet. Every sheep get hung for his own feet. So if you that doesn't answer the question. No, no, I want to answer the question. What does Islam teach? Right, what does Islam teach in relation to somebody having sex during Ramadan? What would fix up? What would you? What would be the penalty? For that person, for that person. Substitution or atonement. Or what would be atonement if you like? Okay, he doesn't want to answer. Is any other Muslims? You don't know. Should we read what Muhammad did? During Ramadan, what happens to you? No, it's not allowed. It's not allowed. No. Where is it? You come swear, you come do it back. You can't have sex with you. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, look at what your prophet did. Yeah. So, as we look at the customs of Islam. Yes. We see actually when people kiss their wives, yes. when people had sexual relationship with their wives, it was all right. <laughs> they could make atonement and then move on from that. That's right. Yet today you go against that. That's fine. Right. So again, as we look at the customs of Ramadan, yeah. traditions of Ramadan, teachings of Islam, not only we see Quran is false religion, false book, Islam is false religion, and Muhammad is false book, we also see teaching of Ramadan shows Islam is antichrist. Yes. Islam comes and goes against the teachings of Lord Jesus. That's correct. While Lord Jesus tells us, when you fast, don't make it public. Yet, when Muslims fast, you need to see and identify them from their look because they will look hungry, they will look thirsty. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. antichrist. That's antichrist, man. Therefore, there yeah. is no reason mm. for Muslims to start fasting from next week. It's not going to help you anyway. We invite you to come and then look at the teachings of Jesus on Ramadan. That's right. We invite you to come and look at the teachings of Jesus on life yes. and li life after this. That's correct. Yes, yes, yes. It yes. is only Lord Jesus meets with our spiritual thirst. Yeah. It is only Lord Jesus yeah. meets with our physical thirst. It is only Lord Jesus meets our spiritual hunger and spiritual thirst. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And when we fast as a Christian, we don't fast because people look at us and then they feel sorry for us. We, we look weak, we look hungry. We fast because we want to come close to God. That's right. We fast because we want to hear from God better. Right. We fast because we want to dig into the Word of God. Yeah. We fast because we want to learn more about God. Yeah. We want to see what God did for us. Right, right. So, so, sir, what's the reason you fast? You don't fast? Okay. Uh, you don't fast? You, you, you're not Muslim then? Are you not Muslim? Oh, okay. All right, so, so yeah. As we see Ramadan is coming, yeah. Islamic traditional messed up. Yeah. As we encourage Muslims to not follow the teachings of Ramadan to become more anti-Christ. Yeah. Also, we want to look at something more deeper about Ramadan. Yes. We want to see actually what happens during Ramadan. Mm. Muslims, Muslims are telling us Ramadan is all about fasting. Yes. Muslims are telling us 
Ramadan is the time where Allah revealed his revelation to the yeah. Holy Book to yeah. mankind. Yeah. But when we look at the Islamic tradition yeah. and Muslim customs, we see actually Ramadan stands for some, something else. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Ramadan stands for feast, Ramadan stands for killing, yeah. and Ramadan stands for cursing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Is that correct, sir? Is, is that true? Is that true? She just asked, Ramadan, Ramadan, according to your sources, Ramadan stands for killing, feasting, and cursing. Are you listening? This guy's not listening. We want some Muslims who can listen. According, okay, according to your, your sources that we read, Ramadan stands for or up, upholds feasting, killing, and cursing. Would you agree with that? You're answering that I'm a Muslim. <laughs> Are you Muslim, brother? I'm far, as far as, I'm as far from Muslim as you can think. Alright, so, it stands for those things. So you don't know? Do you, Are you going to fast next week? I'm the London woman. I don't know what's going on. Are you going, going to be feasting? Cursing? I'm asking you, are you going to be... I'm a, listen, no, we're, we're asking you something. Are you going to be fasting, cursing and killing during Ramadan? It's not a trick question. I'm asking you the question. This guy. Alright, yeah, so don't worry about him. As you look at the Islamic tradition, yeah. we see Ramadan stands for feasting, killing and cursing. Yeah. Let's see what is the reason for this season. What is the reason for the season of Ramadan? First, yeah. Ramadan stands for feasting yeah. instead of fast. Yeah. How do we know that this? How do we know this? Well, we, we just have to read, you know, um, so we have general source, we have statistics um, that, that state certain facts in regards to Islam and Ramadan. So, I'm going to read them. In the Middle East generally, around 15 to 25% of all food purchased or prepared during Ramadan find its way to the garbage bin before even being used or consumed. And that's from the economy. Um, and you know that they, they, they research um, org organisms and things like that. I read um, what it says in the in, in, yeah, in the Gulf News. It says in the buy 10 to 15 percent rise in sales during the period uh, during the period of Ramadan, and that's the the Gulf News. And um, yes. Customs of Muslims. Yeah. This is as the time of Ramadan comes. Yeah. Muslim claims they are fasting. Yeah. Yet it is the time of the year. Yeah. When they um, when they spend lots of more food. Yes. When they use and eat lots of food. Average average um, use of food is from ten to twenty five percent. That's right. That's in right. Middle that's right. 10 to 25 percent extra food people eat during the Ramadan. Just, just a minute, just a minute. That doesn't look like yeah. it's the time of fasting. No. It is time of the feast. That's right. It is one of the seven deadly sins yes. in Christian scripture. Gluttony. Gluttony. Yes. One of the seven deadly Seen in Christian scripture, yeah. yet 1.8 billion Muslims are gonna practice that from next Tuesday. That's right, that's right, that's right. As Ramadan stands for feasting, also Ramadan stands for killing. Yeah. It is the time of Ramadan where we see violence and hate increase. That's right, that's right, that's right. As we look at the Islamic scripture, we see Islamic scripture teaches us, Islamic scripture teaches Muslims have right to kill non-Muslims. That's correct. Muslims have right 
to kill hypocrites. Yeah. And Surah 9 verse 5 yeah. tells us you cannot kill pagans mm. when it is the sacred month. Mm. Month number one, month number... Um, number one, number seven, number 11, 11 and, and month number 12. Number yeah. And none of those months yeah. are the month of Ramadan. No. Nope. So, yeah. soon after those four months pass, yeah. Muslims can kill non-Muslims and hypocrites. That's correct. According to yeah. Islamic yeah. tradition. Yeah, yeah. And we look at the examples of Muhammad, and then we see actually Muhammad practiced that as well. That's correct. During the time of Ramadan, it, Muslims got more um, victorious over non-Muslims. That's right. It was the during the time of Ramadan. Battle of Badr, Battle of Badr took place. Yeah. It was the journey the Ramadan. Ten thousands of warriors um, walked towards Mecca. Yes. According to Islamic tradition, Ramadan is the time of killing. Yes, yes, yes. But yes. what does history tell us? Do we see people are dying or getting killed during the Ramadan, brother? Well, yeah, let's look at that. I mean, if we look at what the statistics say, in 2017, okay, that's last year. That's last year, okay. So, this is very recent statistics. It says, in regards to Ramadan, it says we have 2,143 Islamic attacks, 60 in 61 countries, 15,788 killed, 14,361 injured, and in Ramadan, we have 185 terror attacks. Um, terror attacks, 1,605 dead, um, uh, is that the correct? Yeah. And then 1,948 wounded. And so we, we can go on to 2016, the same thing, Ramadan. Let me just understand that. Yes. Are you trying to tell me, last year, in 2017, yeah. during the Ramadan, there were 108, 185 terror attacks? Yeah. And 1,605 people killed during the Ramadan last year by Muslims. That's That's a lot of Ramadan is the holy month. Yeah. If Ramadan is the time where people are trying to come close to God. That's why. Right. Teaching we see 1,605 people. Yeah. 1,605 dead people. Yeah. yeah. Killed by Muslims. So, so since that tune, it would seem to me that coming closer to God is equivalent to killing people, right? Coming close to God is equivalent to practicing what the Islam teaches. Yeah. What are the numbers in 2016? 2016, the numbers are even higher. It says in Ramadan, you had 262 attacks, 1,000 uh, 954 dead, 2,088 wounded. So, in 2017, yeah. we got thousands of people were killed yeah. during the Ramadan. Yeah. And then we see the same. In 2016, mm. thousands of people, 1,954 people were killed yeah. Yeah. during the Ramadan because of the Muslim attacks. Yeah. 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 As Muslims are trying to come close to God, yeah. they are taking the life of non Muslims. Yeah, which is an oxymoron because God creates life. Muslims take away life and they call that coming closer to God, which makes no sense. What are the numbers in 2015? So let's look at 2015. Did anyone got killed in 2015 during Ramadan, brother? Oh, yeah. Um, 2016. Three, it goes even higher. 318 attacks. 2,946 dead. 300, 3,000, sorry. 484 wounded, all in Ramadan. There's a lot of killing, there's a lot of wounding, and there's a lot of attacks going on during Ramadan. Just be, just be cautious. Those numbers are big numbers. Yes. It is important even if it's only one life. Yeah. 
about we are talking about thousands of uh, lives. Yeah. Which has been taken away during the Ramadan yeah. while the Muslim community is fasting. That's right. So Ramadan is not only time of feasting, yeah. Ramadan is also time of killing. Yeah. Yes. Also, we know from the Islamic tradition, mm. Ramadan is also time of cursing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Should we, should, should we look at what, they, what the, um, the hadith, sorry, what the um, sources say? Yes. Right, so let's look at what they say in regards to cursings. Okay, so I'm reading from Al Muwat's hadith. Al Muwat's hadith. Hadith 6.6 six. It says Watching the night in prayer Yahya related to me From Malik from Dawood Ibn al Hussein, But he heard al Araj say I never saw the people In Ramadan But, but they were cursing The disbelievers So, so right here Time of Ramadan yep. Are you trying to tell me Muslims were cursing the disbelievers? Muslims ha are cursing the disbelievers. This is um, a period of time when they're supposed to be coming closer to God, coming, becoming more pious, becoming more and um, thinking about evil deeds and thinking about how to live righteous. But yet out of their tongue, out of their mouth, cursings upon the disbelievers. So I, I read when I look at the Quran, yes. Quran Allah is cursing people. So Quran is teaching that. Yes. But now, at the time of Ramadan, yes. while billions of billions of Muslims are fasting, yeah. one of the observations is made. Yeah, don't worry about that. They yeah. are cursing yeah. the non-believers during the time of Ramadan. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it doesn't look like Ramadan is the time people come more close to God. <laughs> no, not at all. But it looks like Ramadan is the time. Feasting of time, not fasting. Ramadan is the time of not peace, yet killing. Not time of blessing, but time of cursing. Feasting, killing, and cursing. Well, yeah, and I would say it's actually the actual opposite sides of the spectrum. Ramadan isn't a time when you're coming closer to God, but on the other hand, it's particularly coming from a Christian perspective, it's actually a time when you're coming closer to Shaitan, you're coming closer to the devil because uh, you're, you're using gluttony, you're, uh, there's a lot of killing and a lot of cursing which implicates or which implies that you're not, you're not going towards a righteous but through a sinful means, which means that you're doing the exact opposite which you proclaim that you're doing, which is moving further away from God and closer to the devil. Uh, 1.8 billion Muslims. Yes. You are going to fast from next Tuesday. That's right. Of course, we are aware that kids are not going to fast yeah. most of, in most of places. Yeah. But as you fast, mm. remember, the people who you were going to curse yeah. are identified as the people of the book. Yeah. People who you are going to curse are identified sons and daughters of Yahweh. Yes. People who you are going to take their life, yeah. they are identified as the people who are made in God's image. That's right. That's right. In God's own image they are made. Yeah. Yet, for 30 days, yeah. as you feast, as you practice to take the life of others, yeah. as you curse, remember, there is a one and true living God. Yes. His name is his Yahweh. There is one true living God. Yes. God of Bible. Amen. One God in three persons. That's right. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. Yes, 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 yes. God loved the world so much. Yes. Even that God loved the Muslims. Yes. With knowing you are going to curse us from next Tuesday. Yes. Yet he sent his only son. Yeah. To die on the cross for the sin of mankind. Yeah. So that man and woman can be.
be reconciled, men and women can spend eternity with God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, and what we must understand is that God, Jesus, the true Jesus of the Bible, He gives you an alternative. You don't have to be stuck with this false religion. You don't have to be um, stuck with the lies of, 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 uh, of this Quran. But you can put your faith in Jesus. Now, rather what the Bible teaches, what Jesus said, He said, rather than, um, than you know, put up your face, you know, gloomy, like the hypocrites, He said, you know what you should do when you fast? You should be, you should, it should be something of the heart. I'll read it to you. The scripture says in Luke 6, 27, it says, but I say to you, who, um, no, sorry, I'll say to you, Matthew, so Matthew 6, chapter 16, whenever you fast, do not put on a gloomy face as the hypocrites do, for they neglect their appearances so that they will be noticed by men. They are when they are fasting. Truly, I say to you, their reward, it, they, they will have the reward in full. Your reward, your fasting ought not to be for external, for people around you, but it should be uh, because you want to be close to God. It's because you want to experience a, 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 a relationship with your God, and you have to understand that it's God that you should be impressing, not people. Now what the scripture also says, in terms of killing, the Bible says, thou shalt not kill. It says, love your neighbor. It says, uh, it says uh, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Scripture teaches you not to kill, but to love your neighbor. And that's what Jesus Christ taught. In terms of cursing, Jesus Christ says, bless those who curse you. Our lives should not be ones that are constantly cursing or even wants to curse our enemy, he said, bless those who curse you. He said, do good to those who despitefully use you. He said, love your enemies. And so we have an alternative. There is an option. You don't have to follow this false teaching. You can come to Jesus. He is the only way, the truth and the life. He died as an atonement for your sin. And through that, you can receive salvation. Come to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. <laughs>